Welcome to Survivor NSFW. Johnny, I'm still uh, quarantined to my guest bedroom where you have had sexual relations uh, as told on our uh, patron podcast. Stop, stop uh, trying to work in a blue chew ad so quickly, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> this is not the time. We're, we're, we're in the presence of a teacher here. Yeah, we are. <laughs> you know, I, I, am, I am very stoked. As much as uh, Johnny and I joke around and bust balls on the podcast, it is truly an honor to have Survivor winner, of what was this season, Johnny? Was it Ghost Island or Redemption Islanders? I'm just kidding. <laughs> Tommy Sheehan, what is going on, my brother? This is truly awesome for me as a Survivor fan. I get excited every time that I get to meet a Survivor that I haven't met before, whether it's on this podcast or in person. And Johnny Fairplay always will text me and be like, Hey, Matt, uh, so uh, Monday night we're doing a fucking uh, Q&A with Russell Hans, and then we're doing Tommy Sheehan, and then we're doing Lex Vandenberg. And it just it always makes me, like, super excited and, and giddy because I love Survivor, as I know you do too, Yeah, right? this is exciting. I listen to all the different podcasts. I listen to you guys bash me for, what, 13 <laughs> episodes. So hopefully oh, yeah. I don't put you to sleep right now, but I will do my best and give you many lessons on how to play – time with Tommy uh, so we kept this going and rolling we we, yeah. we did we did not stop after 13 episodes Tommy I assure you it, <laughs> it, it continued <laughs> I, I I do admire your optimism that you thought we quit after that that's good <laughs> I just came on from Matt you know I grew I'm growing out my beard the quarantine beard I'm gonna try to beat his record you know I, I might have to do a couple years of quarantine to get there but uh, yeah, I've been in quarantine for 20 years with my <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, Tommy, it's 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 a pleasure, my brother. It, yeah. it truly is. Same here. Same here. Tommy, there there's uh we we there there's an elephant in the room here uh in that we're watching a season uh be uh that that goes under the the auspices of Winners at War. Did you receive a phone call? No, I did not receive a phone call. I actually asked about it and they said that it was, you know, they couldn't have put me on because the season they go back to back with Malcolm and things like that, there wasn't a winner. If I was on this, then our whole season would have been like technically spoiled because the cast gets released because I didn't technically win until December 18th. So, um, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Or that I'm just boring as fuck and that uh, they just didn't want me out there. All right. Well, let's 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 let's, uh, let's talk about that before we go into the episode. Um, for for those that only watch the television show and and haven't got a chance to you know to hear your deep dive with Rob C and and, and your talks with the Survivor specialists and 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 you know and any anyone that would listen to you and not fall asleep, um, <laughs> you. You uh, you played a smart game. You didn't go on. I mean, I went on Survivor to create the character of Johnny Fairplay, have that character be the biggest bad guy in the history of reality television, and have that character on on TV for as long as possible. Did did I skip one part in that? Yes, I should have added to those three things. I should have said, "Hey, Johnny, how about do four things, dumb dumb, and win the game?" I didn't have that in there. You went in the in, with the philosophy of, "I want to win a million dollars." Yeah, and I think that's what's kind of cool is since fourth grade, I've wanted to play this game, and I grew up watching it, and we used to put the tapes in. I used to watch it all the time and take notes when I was nine years old. I do not want to be famous. I do not want to be on other reality shows. But I, if I got asked back to Survivor, would I play again? Yes, but I played to win the game. And I think that's what's kind of, you know, sometimes wrong with the game is a lot of people do go on, and I noticed with my season and other seasons, they're like, how many confessionals you get? How many did you get? Like, I just zoned in on the finish line. I didn't care what I needed to do. I've said it sometimes in podcasts where I'll never forget one night I was doing, uh, like, stand-up, and I was impersonating Nora and Elaine, and I was making everybody laugh. And that was the worst night of sleep I had out there because I was like, what are you doing? Like, you're making yourself way too out there. Stop talking. The next day, I was a mute, silent person. So, yes, I knew I wasn't going to be great television, but I needed to do what I needed to do to win the game. Yeah, and, well, and, 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 people, and props to you for that, dude. Oh, absolutely. And, and people people think about those confessional things. If you're like someone like myself, I'm going to do 10 confessionals a day. 
because I'm an over the top character. Maybe I'm I'm being instrumental in moves. Maybe I'm not. I'm with a lot of people. I'm getting benefit of the doubt. They're just like, ah, you know, Johnny's the narrator. You know, maybe this this conversation he's having isn't about me, and and I'll allow that. You know, whereas if you see like you know Adara or Tawana, you know, get four four confessionals in a day out of nowhere, it's just like she's making a move, and yeah. we got to send her home. So you sitting there getting minimal confessionals, no one's sitting there going, well, you know, Tommy's out to get me, or or Tommy's doing this. It's just like, oh well, you know, Tommy's there. That you know, and that that's smart. I mean, you know, I I did a a, a, a a an interview with Luke Toki the king of the jungle from Australian survivor on, uh, on Tuesday night and hearing him discuss the way he, he, he views the gameplay through production out there. I thought I was talking to myself. I've never in the history of survivor met another player that just the, the analysis of like, like Luke Toki sing there is, he's like, I'm making this move. I'm going against this person, but if I don't get credit via confessional and follow confessional, that move doesn't count as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. And, 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 and he's just so methodical and I'm, I'm sitting, I'm just like, you know, cause I always thought dirty Harry was the, the Australian version of, of Johnny Fairplay, but, but Luke Toki, like on, on the production uh, versus strategy uh, aspect of the game, I've never in my entire life heard someone break it down basically frame by frame the way I do. It's like it was incredible. And once again, like the opposite of your strategy, but they're both winning strategies. And you know except what? except for me, <laughs> <laughs> What's actually crazy too is I started picking up day one where Jeff kept calling on say Lauren a lot, right? And I can't be like, why does Jeff call on Lauren? She's going to get all the screen time. And in my head, I'm like, oh, wow, I want to play the opposite. So I'd come back from confessionals and I'd be like, no, they said they needed more out of me that I could leave. I wasn't giving them anything. Or at Tribal, if Jeff called me, I'd be like, I don't know, Jeff. Like, I would try to not do it because especially when we met Elaine, everyone's like, Elaine's getting all the screen time. People would argue about that on the island. So I'm like, selfish reasons, people are going to – I could pay, poke, poke the bear and be like, hey, Elaine's getting all the screen time. Let's vote yeah. her out. She's too likable. Easily. Easily. Yeah. So, but uh, it, it, it's so incredible. And, and uh, like, like the only difference in, in philosophies that, that Luke and I had was uh, I didn't like to reveal, like the, the rumor and innuendo is that the only time you can be completely honest is at tribal council. And I'm like, yeah, if you're a fool. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, like, I'm just like, uh, the only time you can be honest is in a confessional, you idiot. But, yeah. but, but, but people really believe that and people feel that they can come clean at tribal and it's okay. And I'm like, yeah, if you want to expose your game, please do. But, but Luke is a firm believer in if you don't say it at tribal, it doesn't count. Like, like he, he he wants to make sure that that if, if if they're not getting what what he wants them to get via confessional, he's going to say it at tribal in a way that's huge, over the top. It has to be used. In I've never seen Australian Survivor yet, but is there live tribals like now? Because I feel like if I started like, look, Wendell the other day was like to poverty, like, hey, Parv, like let's let's work together, and then that could have blown up in his face, and he could have went home, like. I feel like, does that happen in Australian Survivor, where if you're that honest, people are going to then say, well, no, F that. I'm going to go stand up and start moving around. There's been, There was on Australian All-Stars, there were two, w- without spoilers, Matt, there, there, were, yeah. there were two big things where something's about to happen and another person gets up and says, no. Let's talk right now, and they get up and have a have a conversation, and it's like holy shit, and you know, and I'm screaming to the TV. I'm just like, please don't be lying, please don't be lying, please don't be lying. And then fast forward later, something eerily similar, and and the person's like, we can't do this. Trust me on this. Go against everything you're thinking, and and then I'm just like. They're fucking lying. They're fucking lying. <laughs> you know? So yeah. It, it's uh yeah it's it's they're the Australian the Australian survivors. They feel that physically they could dominate us, and and I think they're right for the most part. However, 
strategically, they they feel that we're better. And I'm watching this last season of Survivor of, of, of All-Stars going, I've seen the best best strategic games I've ever seen in my entire life. Like, I think they don't think that they're as good as they are, which is fine. They can keep thinking that. Yeah. However, if they want to, you know, bring, like, I, I peek behind the curtain. I messaged one of the producers of Australian Survivor today. And I said, hey, you know, it doesn't have to be next season. Doesn't have to be the season after that. But you guys want to go 12 versus 12. I got 11 motherfuckers yeah. that are a hell of a lot bigger than me that I'm more than happy to bring with me to that that beach. Let's go. Oh, I would love that. It would be so cool to see like continent versus continent, like their, their style of Survivor versus our style and just like all cool. out for all. I think that would legit be uh, winners at war. Like whoever wins that is not only the best Survivor player, is the best in the, in the world, world right so, yeah. and i would and i would love to see you actually play that would be nice oh my god <laughs> I, I talked to johnny fairplay about that everyone probably thinks that we hate each other but um but we actually talked about that is it's so hard as a competitive person i've played you know college basketball i was recruited you know college football i was you know a big athlete and i couldn't win a challenge knowing I would go home the next day. It was sure. so hard to be like, oh, my hand slipped. Oh, I fell off this thing. It would eat me up for days and days, but that's what you have to do to win, which is kind of sad where it's play half-ass and yeah. you win Survivor, which I don't really enjoy about our style of play, I guess. So but, but, you, but you, Australian play, real quick, Matt. Australian play, like, you know, talking to Dirty Harry, he said, Joey Amazing is easy, final five, every season of Australian Survivor. He wow. is not, they're not going after him for being a challenge beast. If, 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 you're, if you're a challenge beast and you have a remotely good social game, you're there because they respect people that play the game. Sign me up. Sign me up. <laughs> I'll play a different so, game. so real quick, are you bummed watching this season Tommy, that you're not out there. Is it like because you're a huge fan since you were nine years old, taking notes or whatever? How hard is it for you to watch this without without playing? It's it's crazy. Where I was really excited to be a fan again. You know, as as your player, like you're getting bashed on Twitter or just it's just a whole world of like like annoyance, right? I wanted to be a fan again and. Watching this back, I was so excited. And right when it was like Winners at War, the first episode, I was like, shit, this sucks. And to be yeah. honest, every episode, there's just this envy. There's this fire in me where I was just like, I would have done this. I would have done this. I would have been with this person. I could have done that. I could have showed the world what I could have done more. You know, I would have loved, loved to have been out there with all these, you know, quote unquote greats and all these winners. Uh, to kind of, because now again, this is where you show you're not just a one hit wonder. You, I could dominate my season, but I could dominate the great players too. So every episode, I'm just like drooling of like what I would have done or what I could have done. It was just bad timing. And, uh, but yeah, it's, it's actually pretty tough for me to watch. I'm sure. I'm sure. And Johnny, so you can, uh, people can go onto an app and literally bet and play games about Survivor. Tell our listeners about it. Well, it's absolutely free to play, Matt and Tommy. And uh, I'm not allowed to play, or else I would take the money every time. Because if you've listened to this podcast, I know more about Survivor than anyone on the planet. Uh, case in point, uh, my, my winner pick for, uh, for your season was Chelsea Green. I was right on the money there. What third boot? Uh, yeah, so it would probably be pointless for me to play. But you guys who watch the show and know the show better than any of us, go to fanduel.com slash fair play. Fair play is in all caps. It is case sensitive. That's F A N D U E L dot com slash F A I R P L A Y. Each and every week before the episode airs, East Coast time, 8 p.m. on Wednesday nights. Wednesday and nights. you get. <laughs> wow. Who is that? That I was that. That was pretty cool. I so, love that. But, uh, but you go on there and you, you, you pick your four players that you think are going to do the most. You know, is your player going to get a fire token? Is your player going to win immunity? Is your player going to cry? And if you guys didn't double down on Adam Klein crying tonight, you are an idiot. <laughs> Jesus. 
<laughs> that was easy money right there. So, but uh, but but each and every week they're giving away. Uh, I believe uh, this week two thousand forty dollars. How cool is that? Free to play, no money to get in and play. It's uh, it's really cool. A lot of people are thinking. Hey, you know, this is a survivor thing to get in and pick the winner. You know, is it too late to do that? This is not what this is. Uh, each each player, uh, each person has, has different uh, points that they can earn throughout the episode. This is each and every episode you can do this. So go right now, get in for next week. If you were in today, congratulations. I had a friend of mine that lives in Alaska. Like uh, he, he's he's uh, he's one of the representatives for uh, for Leave No Trace across the world. He goes around to all, all the REIs and stuff, and he, and he explains how to live with, without leaving a trace on the planet. And uh, he he uh, he has a very limited <laughs> internet. He has very and uh, he he was one of the first place uh, winners uh, of last week's, and and thanked me very much. For, for showing me that this is a possibility to do this. Huge Survivor fan. Uh, actually, I gave him a Rick Devins autograph picture the last time I saw him. I, I he, uh, he likes the players that aren't as good as me. It's weird. So, uh -huh. <laughs> so but, uh, but yeah, go to fanduel.com slash fair play. And fair play is, is in all caps. Get in, get in your, your picks each and every week. They're going to the end of the season. We're so excited to have them as a sponsor here of the Survivor and SFW podcast. And, uh, man, if you had to bet who was coming back into the game tonight, what would Dude. you have thought? So, I had him on my fan duel. <laughs> Did I, you? <laughs> I, had, I had Tyson as my MVP because I thought – so you get double points for that. Oh, no, yep. point five times. So I had Tyson. He got me 30 points. But then the rest of my squad, I had Ben, Tony, Michelle, and Sarah, who really did nothing. So I did not place well this time. So not only if you play FanDuel, you can beat Survivor players, too, because we're playing also. Dude, that wow. is so awesome. But I tell you what, I can't believe it, you guys, that I don't know if it's because that Johnny, like you and I do the podcast every week or what, but the fact that we're episode eight, we're 19 days in to Survivor Winners at War, it's it's kind of tripping me out. It just time is flying by. I actually hope it flies by even faster because, quite frankly, I'm tired of this COVID nineteen shit. And when we get to watch Survivor, all of us that love the game, players and fans, get to just kind of get our mind off the bullshit that's going on in the world and watch this game that we love. And I tell you what, Johnny, last week I think you might have said it was your favorite episode of the season. This was not. Ten, did you not like tonight at all? I love tonight's episode. I, 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 I liked it, but it was not my favorite episode. <laughs> okay, well, I I actually enjoyed this episode more than I did last time. We start off day 19, Edge of Extinction, and this is where it all boils down to who is going to get back into the game, and there's an epic challenge and we have all the players that I love, all the old school people. I don't know who the hell I want to get back in at this point because I love so many people that are on the edge of extinction. Well, well real quick, Matt, we did learn b before them heading to that challenge that Natalie has earned enough fire tokens on yes. her own mm -hmm. to buy an advantage and an idol. Right. And, of course, Boston Rob with Amber's help, not mm -hmm. by himself. Because you know it's so fair to have a husband and wife uh, tag team out there in a in a all winter season, uh, but uh, they are there. They both won. You know they're half the battle. And, and, more, the and more power to her to give her. I mean, Rob well, has the better chance of getting. Well, what is she going to do with with one one token? Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> so, yeah. But uh, and and then for some reason, uh, Parvati has to do yoga. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did, did you see uh what was it uh was it on wikipedia uh uh they have they haven't mentioned it, it it's it was, it's mentioned on our patreon page so parvy parvity has taken exception uh to the fact that they have air they aired the tribal councils out of sequence and that Sandra's tribal council was prior to Parvati's. Oh, wait, wait, as she, far as watching the show. Yes. Okay. A and, and she wants it on record that Sandra went home before her. Wow. And and uh, as far as the record books are, are 
are written, they are not changing that. So, uh, so Parvati went home before Sandra. <laughs> so let's, 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 uh, sorry, Parv, uh, you know, you don't get to choose what order that, that the edit goes down, but, Did uh, they but just do that for Sandra to have the continuity of like raising the flag. Is that the reason they edited it that way? Uh, I just think it was a bigger deal. Um, Sandra's the queen and, and, and new t-shirt available right now at johnnyfairplay.com just dropped and still the queen uh Sandra Diaz Twine. So let and, me ask you this, Tommy. Yeah. So obviously Johnny busts Sandra's balls all the time about being a worthless winner and <laughs> blah 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 blah. But my question It's a recurring is, theme. It, have you, have you it, caught it that is. <laughs> <laughs> But do you think that because I know there's a bunch of controversy with, with Russell Hans uh getting a lot of hate from people uh, do you think Sandra raising the flag at Edge of Extinction counts as a quit in this situation or not a quit? Because quite frankly, for me, I don't consider it a quit. I think you got voted out of the game of Survivor. Sandra has zero to prove. Sandra could not have won the challenge that happened tonight to get back in the game. What are your What is your opinion, Tommy? So it's I'm in the fence between this because – Queen stays queen. I met her, you know, because she was part of my season. I met her in my finale. She shows me how amazing she is with people. Like, I can see why she won the game twice. So I still think she's absolutely a legend. I think she deserved her two wins. However, she took herself out of the game. So in my eyes, it's a quit, but it doesn't hurt her legacy. So okay. I don't do her like I listened to Russell Hans thing and he was like she's a quitter I'll never even play with her again you know well, I don't think no, I don't think he gets to decide he, that <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and you know he would in a heartbeat too but yeah. Qu Queen face Queen she's a legend but uh, it has to go down as a quit in my eyes yeah she got voted out but she took herself out of the game she had a zero percent chance of winning that challenge but hey there's still that point oh oh one you know go out by the way. Everyone went out, you know, either getting voted out or not on your own will, kind of thing. Right, right. What do you, and Johnny? Are you? What's your at this point in time? What's your take on it? Um, I, I, I think she made the right decision for her. Mm -hmm. So, and I think she's still the queen. Listen, I don't make shirts that I don't believe in. I mean, you know, also dropped this week was a Shamu with the Boston Red Sox hat on. I believe that that Boston Rob is fat. I'm, I mean, I'm, <laughs> I stand by that, and I still stand by the fact that that Sandra Diaz Twine is still the queen. I listen. You know, she's she's my enemy, but she's my enemy. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, yeah, mutual that's, respect. Yeah. So we have the, the Edge of Extinction. A challenge is going to go down at the same time. It is merge time, and this is where I think the game is really. Gonna start getting good. Did you uh, like the black buff? Huh? Oh, dude, I'm stoked on the buffs, and I'm also just kind of pumped at the fact of how this is all going down, man. I think that you know, this season, I, I know going into winners at war, I think that it was gonna be like, oh, this is gonna be the greatest season of all time. Thus far, I think, I mean, I think it's a top tier season especially off the uh, seasons we've been having to uh, watch prior to this. But I'm saying like, you, I, I think, thank you for making us want this so much, Tommy. <laughs> but, but I don't I, like thus far. I haven't been like totally like, I love it. Cause I, 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 I think it's great, but I haven't been like completely like this is the best season of all time. But I think now it's a turning point that I think it's going to keep getting better and better and better. Now, Tommy, so yeah. far as a season, uh, you know, a lot of hype going into a winter season. I know, you know, we've talked about like there was going to be a legend season. Potentially a lot of legends got phone calls uh, before, you know, they decided that it was going to be an all winter season. They changed the theme. It's all winners, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. Do you think this is like one of the greatest seasons of all time right now as a, as a survivor fan? So the way I look at it too, is even as me, I, you know, I would love to return and play again. I love newbie seasons because I love how in the pre-merge you get to know their character. Cause usually the game doesn't really pick up like to the full cutthroat level until merge. 
So um, that's why I like pre-merge on newbie seasons where you get to know these people. However, we haven't seen Ethan on our screen and we got to hear those storylines of what they're up to now. I do agree it's a top tier season. I think people are hyping it up a little too much because it's winners. Um, it's, it's nothing like heroes versus villains. It's, you know, however, I love watching it. It's good gameplay. And I really do think, um, that from now on it's going to be, cause now they can taste it right at merge. You can taste $2 million. So I oh. think it's, I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're my wife, I'm going to backstab you, you know, and do whatever I need to do in order Ooh, to Tommy you know, Sheehan just says, I don't care if you're my wife. So that means if you play. Ace is, is, try, Ace is just trying to get on blood versus water because he knows they won't cast him for him. I, geez, this, is, this, is a, this is a pathetically veiled attempt, Tommy Sheehan. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I would never want to actually play with, you know, a loved one. I think Boston Robin, uh, like you just said, it was, a you know, an advantage for Boston Robin. You got a token. No, that was such a disadvantage when you play with somebody. I think it's it, Boston Rob and Amber. Amber got voted off because she was with somebody. And if they made merge, then Amber's on the jury. They're going to be like, well, now he has an automatic jury vote. Let's vote him off. I think it's a disadvantage to ever play with, you know, a loved one, unless it's a, a loved one season. Yeah, I would hate that. I I, 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 I couldn't. Like, yeah. I mean, my, my only loved one that I would be comfortable playing with is Matt. No. <laughs> I love you. Vote him off? So uh, I, I would I would I'd vote him off uh, sixth. Okay. <laughs> so, well, hold on, real real quick. Getting to the buffs. So it's a black buff, which is is one of the rarest colors in the history of Survivor. I love the black buff. Uh, uh, what are you, what, do you got, do you, Tommy? What, what's your take? I love the buff. I saw it in the preview pictures. Yeah. I love the yellow with it. It pops yeah. off so much. You know, I'm not usually a yellow fan. You know, actually, you know, even though I'm colorblind, I can figure that out. Um, <laughs> yes. black, the, the, like the gold and the yellow, I think it's just like a nice smooth buff. It's badass. Like it's like kind of like you're going to war. You're camouflaged out and you're ready to go. I love it. Yeah. Did have you seen those glasses that you can see if you're colorblind? Have you? Have no. You, they're they're like three grand and they work. Huh. No, I'm good. Huh. Why would you want to see color? Like honestly, uh, like uh, uh, when I first started podcasting, I, I did a, a podcast with uh, this guy David Newsbaum. Uh, he had a podcast called Nuzzy and the Guy, and uh, and I follow the guy on on Twitter. And uh, he took like one of his uh, his best friend uh, got the glasses, and he and he took them out to like a park. He's like, you know, wait, and they go out to a park, and. He's in tears. The guy's in tears. I'm in fucking tears. Why? It's 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 the most incredible. I mean, so if, if I, I were color, if, if I were I colorblind, I, and I wanted, what's that? If I buy those glasses, will you cry and you be? Yeah, happy? yeah. Wow. <laughs> get them now. Look at that. No, no. So I, colorblind. If, if, if I won a million dollars, I wouldn't sweat three grand on a pair of glasses that let me see color. Well, so you can't know. see any you can't see any colors at all, Tommy. All right, so this is actually like a crazy question. I've been getting like crazy, like color blinds. I know what you know grass is because I can see that tint of color. I know it's green, so when I see that tint of color via memory, I know that's green. So yeah. I'm able to like figure out what colors are what based on oh the sky is blue. I see that you know tint of color, yeah. and now I can kind of tell what other things are blue. But if you have like it's a colorblind test is like a, a, a screen of say dark blue. And then in light blue, it'll have like an S and you'd be like, what color, what, what letter is in that thing? And I'd be like, I have no clue. Yeah. Get those I glasses, can't. dude. Get I'm honest. Oh my God. Like I, cause I went to school. I actually, I dated a girl that was colorblind and she was one of like seven colorblind females on the, on uh, either in the U S or the East because the girls aren't colorblind. I was gonna say, are you sure it wasn't your boyfriend? Yeah, no, no. <laughs> so most, so so it's mostly male, genetic males all. are kind of man. Wow, yeah. I didn't even knew that. Yeah, man, but Tommy, teach, get those glasses. Teach you man. time with Tommy. I know. Yeah, I did. I learned time with Johnny Fairplay. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. So so and, and and Tommy, real quick, I got to give you a shout out here because. All right, so for the Survivor premiere in Cincinnati, I had a bunch of uh, had a bunch of red season forty buffs and a bunch of uh, uh, blue season forty buffs, and then I had a few 
final five season 39 buffs. And I figure, hey, these are limited edition. They're going to be excited because, you know, like they're, they're a very limited release. They, there's a clue on there. You know, uh, talking to people, they're just like, fair play, what would you choose? I'm just like, well, I I don't think – there's very few seasons I hate more than season 39. I mean, you know, <laughs> let, 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 let's be – I just – I mean, I don't I don't want to learn, okay? I, I, I learned way too much on season 39. So, uh, and I don't think you guys wanted to teach. So, teaching time with Tommy had nothing to do with what we saw on season thirty-nine. I assure you. See, our, our <laughs> hatred, so our <laughs> hatred, though, <laughs> just peek behind the curtain, as John would say, the hatred towards season thirty-nine had nothing to do with Tommy or the majority of the cast. It was the just utter stuff. We just we want to watch yeah. people play the game of Survivor. We don't want to see sexual harassment issues and me too movements and all that shit. So yeah. it's, it's really got so, the majority of the cast. I really yeah. liked. Yeah. And so so it, player, I dreamed of playing my whole life and every <laughs> tribal, like even me, I'm like, I didn't sign up for this. <laughs> yeah, right. I don't, I, like, you know, you're not allowed to have a girl alliance. You're not allowed to have a boy alliance. You're not allowed to be. Th- I'm like, can we just play the game? Like, can yeah. we just stop? Like, even when I was playing, I'm like, I didn't sign up for this. Like besides the dance stuff, it was all this sexism things and this and, I'm like, guys, let's just play the game. Let's stop. Like, oh my yeah. god. So, so, so we have, the, so we have this final five buff, and I'm just like, hey, even though I don't like this buff, I'm just like, if I were a survivor collector, I would imagine in two years this buff is probably going to be worth more than these two, because it, because as I said, limited release, it has, you know, there, there's a specialness. A lot of people aren't going to get that because of their dislike. And that's the shit that that's worth more down the road. The stuff that people like, you know, if everybody gets a season 40 buff, you know, then it's worth less, you know, whereas it's like, man, I probably should have picked up that season 39, especially the limited edition one of the final Mm -hmm. five. So anyway, so, you know, the, the last, you know, so if, if someone came with someone else, it's like, okay, I'll take a season 40 buff. You get the, you get the 39 buff. You collect, you know, you're going to have them both. <clears throat> so only in situations in which someone could get both did someone want the 39 buff. So uh, <laughs> so we get down to the last person. I mean, they show up like, you know, while the show's airing and the only buff I have left is a 39. He's just like, so that's it. I'm just like, yeah, it sucks. You should get here early. I don't know, man. <laughs> so, oh, man. So, so I have what, six remaining buffs. So I hit up Tommy. I'm just like, hey, I, 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 I got, I'm, I'm asking a huge solid here. Can I send you these buffs and can you sign them and send them back? You know, I, I got, I'll, you know, there'll be return posts, everything. Just, and Tommy, stand up guys, like, absolutely get them to me. Got them back immediately. Fast forward to the next live event. The first six buffs that, that went were a Tommy Sheehan season 39 buff. Oh, 100%. I, that's awesome. <laughs> so, that's thank awesome. you. Thank you. So no, it was no really cool. Really cool. So I, I want to. So we go to this freaking challenge, dude. Where you know they're kind of Jeff is talking to like Tyson, and Tyson gets emotional. Tyson's always funny. He's always telling jokes. He's real sarcastic, and he actually starts tearing up. You know, he's a dad, and he's like, maybe I'm some, uh, maybe I'm masking some stuff. You know, and. Uh, and then even Boston Rob gets emotional. So, like, going into the challenge for these guys to potentially get back in the game, man, girls, it was actually, I don't know, man, the stakes were high because you know how badly these players want to get back in the game. And to me, a challenge like this is, like, anyone can win. Yep. You know, Natalie, who is a freaking beast, could win the game and she has all these fire tokens. So I don't know. I was super excited for this challenge. And uh, I mean, going into this challenge, Tommy, who did you think had the best chance of winning to get back in the game? So it's funny, you know, Johnny talking about his, uh, he doesn't even want to listen to me anymore. I'm boring. Uh, <laughs> uh, I going into the challenge, you know, speaking of fan duel, I picked Tyson. I was like, you know what? Like, Kind of like tall and lanky, balanced. So I picked Tyson to actually my fan to get back because you get a lot of points for that. Um, but I think what I love about this challenge, like you said, is you know normally at merge or anything like that, it's always one or two people fighting for their lives and they go all out. In yeah. this case, every single one of them 
needed to win. So there were seven people or how, however many going all out. You know, even someone said, I think it was Ben, he was like, oh my God, Tyson's going all out. You know, it was just, it was fun to watch people fight for their lives and to get back in the game. And you couldn't get a better finish than that also. So uh, it really I mean, it, it was an awesome <laughs> challenge. And it was funny because my, my kids who, you know, watch Survivor, it's like our family time to watch Survivor. And my son, my youngest son, Cannon, was like, jumping up and down he wanted boston rob and he's never seen boston rob play an actual season he saw him on island of the idols but he never actually have, has seen a boston rob season and he was wanting boston rob to win what and it was so he did he was wanting boston rob to win and get back in he's, he's dead to me <laughs> he's dead. I, I i looked over at piper I, I said piper i said who are you rooting for she was like in order i was like yeah she goes parvati tyson natalie and I'm just like, you're not my kid. Ethan. Ethan and Natalie were, were my picks. Well, dude, I tell you what, Natalie's a badass. I, I like Tyson. I mean, like, like when it came down to Boston Rob and Tyson, I mean, I was jumping up, screaming, begging for Tyson to win. <laughs> I, I I honestly love the Tyson one, and I love yeah. the challenge where you have to tie the poles together to retrieve a I key and all that stuff. And oh, I, and I, oh, who's on my list? Because all my list was gone. So we, oh. we have a thing with the Survivor special. We we did a uh, 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 a a draft, and uh, everyone on my draft is out of the game, and uh, Tyson has has re-entered as my only hope. Oh, that's Maybe. awesome. Yeah, I, my I'm that my list is down in my basement on my floor. But man, I tell you what, it, it, I really because my kids were like, "Is it really you think that close of a battle between Twi Tyson and Boston Rob?" I said, "Yes." Mm -hmm. When I played Survivor, so many challenges were like down to the freaking second. I'm sure Tommy, you played in many challenges that were like that, and you too, Johnny. Challenges can be literally down to the very wire. And that's what makes it so exciting. And that's what made this challenge so fun. It was Boston Rob versus Tyson. Tyson wins. All of the others go back to the edge of extinction where there's going to be another challenge down the road to get back into the game. And now all of those people become the jury where they will come to tribal council and they will have a say in who wins the the $2 million. So All it's right. a really well, crazy uh, dynamic. Uh, so remember the, the part of the challenge when you have to put the sticks together and you have to, you have to tie them. Yes. All right. I did that on, uh, on Pearl islands mm -hmm. and you know, Jeff's like, will Rob's be long and strong enough. Blue chew. <laughs> 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 Guys, remember the days when you were always ready to go? <laughs> well, now you, Tommy Sheehan, can increase your performance and get that little confidence, extra confidence in bed. Listen up. It's BlueChew.com. That's blue like the color blue. BlueChew brings you the first chewable with the same FDA-approved active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, so you know they work. Take them anytime, day or night, even on a full stomach. And since they're chewable, they work up to twice as fast as a pill. So you can be ready whenever an opportunity arises. Which I'm sure a lot of opportunities are, are being arised and aroused right now. Quarantine life. People are freaking banging, dude, is what I'm saying. <laughs> you know, I, I, I know every time my wife walks by, I'm like, damn. God, can, we, can we just go? Back? It's, it's kind of hard when it's in the you know the middle of the day and you have like children and stuff. But I how's know the, there's the blue chew working out. There, 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 it's great, and there's <laughs> going to be a lot of people that are going to be having babies nine, ten months from now. Thanks to they're going to be like so many testimonials, Johnny Fairplay, of how blue chew saved their life and how blue chew gave them the child of their freaking dreams. Well, I so, mean, you, you, you have, you have the rumored innuendo that, you know, at, you know, come nine months from now, there's going to be all these kids named uh, Corona or COVID or Charmin. I think there's going to be a lot of kids named blue chew. 
And, I, and, and it's because Blue Chew is, is prescribed online, shipped straight to your door in a discreet package, so there's no in-person doctor's visits because it's not possible. You can't no. go to the doctor. This is the only way to get your hashtag super hard dick. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and they're made in the USA, and since Blue Chew prepares and ships direct, they're cheaper than a pharmacy. Right now, we've got a special deal for our listeners. Visit bluechew.com. Get your first shipment free when you use promo code SURVIVOR. You just pay $5 shipping. Again, that's B-L-U-E-C-H-E-W.com. Promo code SURVIVOR. Try it free. Blue Chew is a better, cheaper, faster choice, and we want to thank them for sponsoring the podcast and, uh, and you know, helping uh, Tommy Sheehan out with his wiener. Yeah. Tommy, <laughs> what, 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 what's, your, uh, what's your Twitter handle? Uh. Actually, Tommy Sheehan twenty two, I think. Tommy Sheehan twenty two. So send your uh, send your pics of your hashtag super hard dicks this week <laughs> to uh, <laughs> at Tommy Sheehan twenty two on Twitter. He'd love to see them. Uh, Matt oh, lo- Matt gets them all the time. So let's break up the monotony. Yeah. Let's send some hashtag super hard dick pics to. I'll uh, read it back to you, my man. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I I have you blocked. So there's yeah, that. True, true, true. <laughs> <laughs> so how- so as we go to the merge feast, man, and uh, I always like a merge feast. And Sarah Lacina, who I'm a big fan of, I think she's a badass. And she is like pretty stoked to be a part of this. It's kind of like looking around at, at wow, I, I am a part of greatness of all these amazing players. And uh, that's something that Tommy, unfortunately – you did not get a chance to be in that group of people, but you are a winner. You are one of 40 people that have 39. ever won. Yeah, one that, that have <laughs> ever won the game of Survivor. And that is 38. You're one of 38. Yeah. Your, your numbers. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because, your right, numbers get I mean, better and better. They do. <laughs> but, By the end of this podcast, you, you might make my I'm top 10 one. list. Yeah, uh, there you go. Yeah. Oh, oh, Tommy, you, you you didn't you did not. So last week on the Patreon side of things, we did uh we were joined by Russell Hans the top ten worst winners in the history oh, of Survivor. Right. And hey, let me tell you something, brother. I mean, top, all five, three? top five. Nice. Where were you on the way? I, 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 I don't know. I forget my <laughs> my. So here's the deal. <laughs> there was a lot of criteria when it came to doing the list for me, and like. For me, for your season, it wasn't the fact, and I'm not just saying this because you're on our podcast, but the season as a whole was ranked low for me. So with that being said, you fall in that criteria. It just it just is what it is. But we love you, Tommy. The only thing we don't love is your fucking Disney mugs. Oh, well, we, 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 have, we, we don't, we'll, we'll get there. I assure you. <laughs> I got a lock on it right now. Oh, <laughs> dude. Smart, smart. Hey, so uh, real quick, did you guys notice that when they arrived back at the merch camp, which was where Wendell had, of course, assembled all the, all the furniture for everyone. So they, they decided to be kind and not make Wendell reassemble new furniture on a new island. Um, that the uh, fire token um, menu had gone up in price. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Right, but, yeah. So, so whatever you could buy for a fire token pre-merge has gone up. I guess now because they're probably going to get a token every single time they win a challenge now. And- yeah. So and and, uh, and and you know and I don't know if it was right there at the beginning or later where I think it's later when uh, after the feast when when uh, the next day when there is the rain you know it uh, it's you know it's acknowledged you know you know ain't no buy buy a tarp I mean that's it's on the menu you can buy it and you know and and you know some people were hoping so someone rich in fire tokens was going to do that and I was shocked Tyson bought peanut butter I mean I feel like. As winners and stuff, everyone's just gonna be like, you know what? I can make. I've done. I made thirty nine days already. Let me. Let me I just keep. Going. I don't think. I, I. I don't think it was done as a like like. It wasn't like he bought some candy. I think mm. he saw. Uh, he asked from from everything that I, I've gathered. He asked to see how big it was, and he was like, "This is a a substantial amount of protein." 
that is essentially the same as an advantage in the challenge gotcha. for, 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 the for, immense, for immensely less currency. So, I mean, because yeah. you saw how big that thing, and, and, and he asked to see, like, they had chunky and, 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 and smooth. He asked to see both of those. He felt there was extra nutrition in the crunchy. So, yeah, it was, it was, a, it was, a, he wasn't going to put, like, you know, if it had been, like, a, you know, a little jar, you know, just, yeah. you know, like, like what they gave, you know, Heidi and Jenna to get naked, the yeah. answer is no. But, you know, that yeah. big jug, he's just like, this is an, he goes, I consider this an advantage going, in, and, and that's what he was buying. So yeah. we see De at, at this merge feast, Denise kind of spilled the beans on the story of like how, how Queen Sandra got voted out, right? And and people started calling her the Queen Slayer, which I thought was a cool terminology. But do you think that Denise is kind of really – should she shut her mouth and, and not really be saying the kind of thing she's been doing? Because Denise is someone who – Or the resume, brother. That I know it is part of the resume, but I think that like, man, she's, I was talking to my wife. I was like, man, like Denise is like playing this, you know, great game winning challenges, voting out Sandra. And, and she's like, dude, she's going to get voted out in the next couple of fucking episodes. 100%. What's crazy is that on, I did a podcast with Lauren for my season last week and everyone was talking or two weeks ago, whenever the Denise move was when she knocked out the queen Yes. And I was the only one that said, hey, I don't think it's a good move. I said, it's way too early. I, it's way too early to put that big of a move on your resume because now everyone sees what you've done. You've cost yourself two idols, right? So it cost yeah. yourself two idols. You knocked off the queen who is literally going to work with you. And now you're going into the merge. Now she wins an immunity challenge. You know how big her resume is now where she is loved. You know, Tommy loves his mommy. I hope Denise wins. But now her resume is way too big with an individual immunity win, with playing two idols. So now she has an advantage, in, two advantages she used, knocked out the queen. She won a challenge. She's not going to make it that far. She's going to be one of the next few to go. But, right. but don't don't you consider going into this season uh, with what Tony refers to as a low-profile player, and maybe she needs something like that on her resume to to – to win a winter season. I mean, like, like I would consider you a low profile player going into 40. If you were out there, yeah. don't you think you would have need, don't you think you, you would have needed to have added something to, to take you to that next level? A hundred percent. But I would have not made that move that early people in the game. You make that move at 10, 11, that knocks you down to nine. You win a challenge that gets you to eight. And now everyone's fresh in your mind that you're doing really well. You win another challenge or two, you're sitting in the final three with a good run at the end where if she's doing that too early, now she's a high profile player where it's kind of, she's an easy vote still now. And she's now she's a high profile. Now we have to watch her. Now her name's coming up in people's mouths when it wasn't ever before. So you got to kind of save that opportunity. You know, when they're, I feel like I say it all the time, you don't play until merge, you know, in my yeah. season, I just kind of sat back once merge hit, you know, the Dan situation overshadowed it, but the Kelly move is my move right at merge. I knocked out Kelly and then I got down to 12 and, you know, I kind of coasted from there. So Luke, Luke, Luke Toki on the Patreon side, what goes the exact, he, he said the big players strategically <clears throat> get your big moves out early pre merge. And so you have them and, and then, and then coast into the merge with as, as solid an alliance as you can. And and then and just rest on those early moves because if you because if you because if you do one of those big moves mid post merge then that's when that target jumps on you. But let yeah. me ask you guys this: so Denise, winner of Survivor Philippines, you know I, I don't think people would uh, go to say like she's a legend or anything like that. But even if she gets voted out next week, next episode. Do you think she's still going to be remembered as voting out the queen? Like, you know what I mean? Like, she's do you think she's going to get the queen, queen slayers? Are, I mean, like, so like forever, Sandra's still the queen, right? Sandra's still the queen. I think Denise has earned the queen slayer uh, status. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, or right. the moniker, not yeah. not necessarily the status, I, but the, the I moniker. agree, one hundred percent. She will be known as who? Who's the one that knocked out the queen? Oh, that was an epic move, one of the best moves in history. They might replay it. They might do a flashback. But did she play to knock out the queen or did she play to win like we were talking about before? 
Yeah, oh. right, right. It's it's going to be interesting how it plays out. So we see Wendell, man. Wendell, you know, merge is happening. Relationships are forming even more. Wendell's talking to Jeremy. They've kind of hung out before, maybe like a charity event or whatnot. They're kind of like just kind of talking and like, who can we get out? And uh, Wendell tells Jeremy that Nick is his number one, okay? And Wendell is kind of like, man, you're giving away too much information, dude, because I think Jeremy is so smart. He's so cool. He's so under the radar. It's how he won the game. I think Jeremy Collins could win the game of Survivor Winners at War again by p- playing the same way he's playing right now. And this dude is like, I do not want Wendell to have Nick as Wendell's number one. I want to be Wendell's number one. So he's talking about, you know, maybe we should vote out Nick. What do you guys think of this kind of relationship of of Jeremy and Wendell? Do you think Jeremy is playing this uh, pretty smart at this point? I think what what's cool about Jeremy is that you know, I love him. I love the style he plays. I think he's one of the best winners of all time. I'll put it out there. Before going out there, I rewatched his season. And I said, I want to play like Jeremy. You know, the way I think he changed the way the game's played to where you have to have shields in front of you, right? And you have to be, you know, lower your threat level and things like that. Um, however, you know, with when it comes to Jeremy, I think he made it too obvious that he was trying to be buddy buddies with Wendell. Everyone was seeing it, you know? They mm-hmm. clearly had a relationship out of the game. <clears throat> they could have just been like, yo, we're good. Like you two, right? We're good. We don't have to now pal around camp now next to each other 24-7. We know we're good. So I think right. he was just a little too on top of Wendell where then everyone started picking up, including Sophie Clark. Right. Well, well Wendell mentions in his pregame – uh, interviews that he's really looking forward to working with Wendell. He, you know, almost idolizes or, or Jeremy. Uh, Wendell almost idolizes Jeremy. And I, watching the episode, I feel that uh, Jeremy kind of took advantage of Wendell. Like, you know, I, I, th- I think he was just like, hey, I see this guy likes me. I see this guy wants to work with me more than anyone else. You know, let me cut his legs out from under him. So that like, it's, it's almost like, uh, um, you know, Darth Vader to, to, uh, to the emperor, you know, he cuts off, uh, cuts off your legs and gives you robot legs, but you know, it's just like, but you're, you're now behoven to him. So I, 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 you know, that it was, it was a tough watch, you know, and, and, uh, also real quick, as, as far as, as the Denise Sandra thing, Sandra, she she made her pregame alliance phone calls as she always did, and one of the phone calls that she made was to Denise. They had an amazing conversation over the phone, and uh, and they both agreed that that conversation really didn't have to be revisited out there. That they were cool, the deal was done, and uh, Sandra would say one of her biggest mistakes that she's made in her four times of playing Survivor is not having a face to face with Denise because she doesn't believe that that Denise meant what she said. Wow. Hmm. Now, now Tommy, so there are many players besides you that are not on this season. So you got, you know, Mike Holloway. But they deserve and, to be. And Richard Hatch <laughs> and Chris Scott Daughtry. Um, you know, many others. So is there any kind of secret Facebook group among the survivor winners that are not on this season? Have you spoken to the Mike Holloways and other people that are in your situation that have not been, you know, not got a call? I mean, Brian Heideck did not get a call. Uh, yeah. Fabio did not get a call. Well, Fabio's still waiting for the call, Matt. But but I'm just saying, like, <laughs> like have have you have you spoken to you know, Chris Underwood or Richard Hatch or any of these other winners that not are not on the season. It's actually all the winners. We have our own Facebook page and we do a trip once a year together. Oh. Um, no, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> a cruise. Um, I, w- yeah. I would, I would love for you guys to go on a cruise right now. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> um, so I've spoken to some people, you know, what's nice is that after I won a ton of past players reached out, you know, went into the DMS or whatever like that. Um, yeah. 
Richard Hatch and I actually have a good friendship before my season even aired. So Dom Abati had a uh, pool party that I went to. And Richard Hatch and I just hit it off. We, we were boys. So we would, he would call me after each episode. So I've talked to him and, you know, his feelings of not getting asked, which he should be out there. He's the first winner of all time. Um, oh, yeah. But not a lot. You know, to be honest, I don't talk to many people outside of, uh, you know, my season and stuff like that. Whoever reaches out, I'll reach out back to. But no. You know, I'm just happy I played, and, you know, it's not nothing I regret not getting a call for or something like that, no. Right, right on. Yeah, I just was curious, like, if in the community of, I mean, Todd Herzog and Natalie White, and, I mean, it's it's yeah. a shame. I mean, we, we've said this before. The, lo- the Lonely Hearts Club. I, I, th- <laughs> I think that no matter what, Survivor Production, CBS, whatever, should have contacted – Every fucking winner that has ever played. How long it would if I had to call 40 people right now, it would take me maybe an hour and a half to call yeah. 40 people, right? In, just, uh, just gauge in your interest. That's all you have to say. Yeah. yeah. No, so, so as much as I love Survivor and stuff, it's like I think it's a slap in the face to the winners that it'd be like Oh, we're gonna we're gonna call back all people with beards that have played. It's an all bearded season, and you fucking don't call me. That's well, sacrilege. You know what I mean? You you do have uh, like four pieces of fake hair in your beard, Matt. So I mean, <laughs> yeah. let's be honest. Can you say? <laughs> oh, I love what, it. What you- is that like? I've talked to Chris Underwood. I met him in person. Awesome guy. Is that like we were kind of exempt from it? Like they weren't going to call us. So I don't think we have that hard of feelings, but I know that people are really hurt from this. What I would have liked to happen, not me because I didn't win at that time, but you know how Jeff wrote like a letter, handwritten letter to like all the winners that participated? Yeah. Know, not one. not all of them. He really? Didn't, Johnny? No. That was the joke. Wow. He wrote that letter to Kim and then they, they all made the fake ones. How many people do you think he wrote the letter to, Johnny? Uh, let's see. I, if I had to guess, uh, Kim, Boston, Rob, uh, I don't even Sandra. know. If, I, I don't even know if Amber gets one. Uh, Sandra, Parvati, Ethan. Wow. That could be it. Because uh, yeah, Sarah- because cause like like you know, Sarah Lucina had the, the two Sarah, sorry, you know, and, and the the Bush light or whatever. Yo, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tyson yeah. had a funny one too, didn't he? Th- yeah, Ty- Tyson just 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 scribbled her name out and wrote I didn't Tyson. Know that. Yeah, That's no. He, they all got one. He should have no. sent one to the other ones. Wow. I agree. I no. agree. It, it's fucked up. It's fucked up. No, no. I mean, hey, he can send a letter to whoever he wants to. I mean, like, you know, <laughs> hey, there, I'm sorry. There's some dud winners. Yeah. But it doesn't matter. You're, 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 a, win, you're a winner out of respect for the people that have won your show. If it wasn't for the winners, Jeff Probst wouldn't have a fucking job, right? Seriously, so hey, it's like I, 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 I don't know. I think the better TV people keep him employed. Yeah, <laughs> casted right. They're not casting us because we're good Survivor players, right? No. They're casting you. They don't care who wins. So I think it's you just their business. they're putting twenty people that they think is going to be good television that has different stories. Yeah, and they're like, whoever wins wins. We don't really give a crap. So you I don't suckered them in. You you told you, you you suckered them in. You're just like you know, hey, I'm going to be great, and you're like, how oh, no, so right? Well, I got I got a question for you, Tommy. When you got on Survivor, was it the first time you had applied and got on, or had you been a finalist at a, a prior uh, casting? What's crazy is that you know I always watched you know in high school, college, and I was like, all right, I'm in college, I can't apply yet, I can't leave college, I can't do this. Once I got out, I got my job, I got tenured, and I was like all right, here's my time. And Big Brother was actually casting. So I was like, let me see if a video works. So I just sat in front, like literally this view, talked for three minutes, sent it into Big Brother, never wanted to do it. And they called me back the next day. So I was like, oh, my video works. So then I went through that casting process as like practice and then kind of just ghosted them. And then when the Survivor casting for 39 came up it was my first ever time i knew my video worked instead of saying what's up big brother i said what's up survivor and submitted in i got on my first try so luckily i know people try their whole lives so i was very very lucky to get on my first try. so so you're wow that's crazy so i would i would have guessed he was a big brother uh reject <laughs> so, so, so you're so you're very at, at this point you're super stoked that you did not get 
on Big Brother and that you get on Survivor because Survivor's your true love. I mean, are you a Big Brother fan or? No, I've I've only seen one episode. I mean, one season because of my casting. But I ghosted them. Like, not to sound anything like that, I was never gonna do Big Brother. If they yeah. gave it to me, I would have said no. I was just practicing as a run for Survivor because I didn't know what casting was. I that's, like this that's, guy. I that's like this guy that, a lot. dude. That is <laughs> fascinating. Yeah. If anything on the if anything on this podcast has made me happy it's during that story because there's a lot of times I, when, when I went through my casting, there's this chick named uh, Sherry. And I think her husband and her applied for the Amazing Race. And they're like, they called her and they're like, uh, your husband sucks, but we like you. You should apply for Survivor. And she applied for Survivor. So hearing these stories of how you get on is, is fascinating. So people... There's all kinds of ways to get on reality television. Tommy Sheehan just told you a perfect story. Maybe you should apply people for another reality television show to see if you get a phone call. Just test the waters. In today's day and age, you can use your iPhone. Tommy, exactly yeah. what you said. We're on a stream yard live, you know, going to YouTube right now. But when I did my Survivor video, it was like I, I set my camera up on a tripod in front of a black background and I was just like talking about myself and I got a phone call from it. Yeah. So it does not have to be some crazy video like Troy Zan's casting video. If anyone has, no. has ever seen Troy Zan, it's like this amazing production. You can just literally send it with your damn iPhone. So props to you, Tommy. So uh, we go to day 21. It's a merge tribe. Is it Koru? Is that how you say it? You guys, uh, I did, K- I, black, the black buff. I think black it's buff. Here. Coach, <laughs> it's ra- it's raining. Everyone is. It's raining miserable. men. Hallelujah, dude! Oh. It, it's miserable. We see Wendell. You know, he's like, man, I want Denise out of this game based off of her hardcore gameplay. Yeah. And we we go into the prequel to the challenge, and er- it's still raining. Everyone is freezing, and Sophie is the most cold that I've ever seen someone probably before a challenge. She looked yeah. absolutely miserable. Yeah. I, I think people don't understand how bad it is when it is bad out there. Tom, did you guys have a really bad day, Tommy? Oh, we had a ton because what happens is usually the even seasons in Fiji are the hurricane seasons, right? So our pre-merge and early merge was, it would rain like every night. We had two bad days where like all of us were like in tears, like yeah. miserable, like you don't sleep. Aaron was running sprints up and down the beach just to stay warm. Like there, there's just no escaping it. Where on television, you watch, it's 10 seconds. You're like, you're playing for $2 million. Get over it. It's yeah. No. miserable. Yeah. We had, we had two tropical storms that later became hurricanes. And those were the two worst days of my entire, like no contest. I mean, like I've had bad, you know, I had girls break up with me or, you know, whatever, like, you know, whatever you think is the worst day you've ever had is nothing compared to there's nowhere you can go. Like, like, you know, people think it's just like, well, you have a shelter. They ain't a shelter, you know, go under a tree. It ain't a tree. It's <laughs> like you are getting pelted with rain mercilessly your your hands your feet are purple they look like raisins and 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 this isn't you know like an uncomfortable 15 minutes this is an uncomfortable 13 hours and you're yeah. literally just just all you can do is cry there is nothing yeah. else you can do but cry your body will not allow you to do anything else yeah we, body, being wet down. is the worst like like i thought before i went on survivor i'm like dude being hungry and thirsty and all this shit. I was never hungry. I was thirsty, but when it's cold and rainy and people are like, oh, well, you're in Fiji, man. It's a tropic. It does not fucking matter. If it's the middle of the night it's and cold. it's pouring the rain, it is free and you are spooning, whether it's a man, woman, straight, gay, this, that, the other, it does not matter. You go into survival mode where all you give a shit about is staying warm and literally surviving. You know what I mean? That's that's really what it boils down to. And we see how gnarly it is with Sophie. If you go back and watch this, you guys, watch how she is shivering. This is not filmed in a fucking production house. This is the real deal, and we see it tonight. What were and- you thinking when you saw that, Tommy? 
Oh, it's funny. I was sending out texts like crazy when it was raining. I was like, guys, I have PTSD from this. <laughs> when I got off the show, everyone's like, how's your appetite? I was like, I was fine. How are you with people? Do you trust them? I'm like, of course. I've known these people before. I'll never forget. I was on a boat tile and it started to pour. And I, everyone else is just swimming still. And I was like, guys, I need to get out of here. I need to go back home. Like rain triggered me for a couple months after that. That's how bad it was. I was like, I need to get off this ocean. Bring me back to the shore. I need to get into a house. Like I hate rain. Um, so it brings back the worst memories. Like you said, the worst days of my life. Oh, ever. dude, ever, it's crazy. Ever. And this challenge, go ahead, well, Johnny. this challenge, I was hoping we would see a puzzle, but we did not. But what if we had, Matt? Dude, if we had, I'll tell you what, man, perplexers, puzzles, survivorpuzzle.com. My kids and I do this puzzle all the time, the fire one. I think they're actually sending me a new puzzle because they know that I love doing puzzles. You're and actually getting two puzzles because we'd like to welcome back all the way through to the end of the season. We will have perplexers, perplexers puzzles joining us as a sponsor you have the tree puzzle that gave Boston Rob such a horrible time, and also the 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 ship with the season forty logo from which last is dude. Week. I saw that today, and there and I was reading their Instagram. It's like it's going to make it harder because there's prints on both sides of the yes. puzzle pieces. I cannot fucking wait. That, that one is have... on its way to your house today, dude. That's awesome because those guys um, during our podcast last week, Johnny. Uh, the dude was like, yeah, uh, Instagram private messaging me like, dude, like I'm so stoked on, on, you know, you guys giving us the shout outs and, you know, but I know, you wrote puzzles. I know. And this have, comes from the heart. Seen it? Have you seen any of these Tommy? No, I haven't. Is this uh, what like the challenge is like how fast I can do it. And all the survivor players are posting and stuff. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. The, the, so, so this, this guy makes these like, um, exact replicas, but they're they're yeah. min they're small. Like so, it's not mm. like like they're maybe like you know ten inches tall by six inches wide, but they're replicas, miniature of real Survivor challenges. So any fool can climb a wall or crawl through sand. But as any Survivor fan knows, challenges are won or lost at the puzzle, and the most successful players are puzzle masters, and you can be one too. Just like you, Tommy Sheehan, Perplexers Puzzles creates handmade miniature replicas of many of Survivor's greatest and most challenging puzzles. Find out if you have what it takes by visiting the Perplexers Puzzle store on Etsy or simply visiting SurvivorPuzzle.com. Enter promo code FAIRPLAY at checkout for 10% discount. And I'm not bullshitting you because these things are dope and they're, I think, he makes them. I mean, I think, I think he hand does each one, and they're, they're he hand wooden. does each one. Yeah, they're, they're wooden. wooden. They 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 have the one that you you move the marble. I mean, like these things are freaking amazing. And and everyone, we're on quarantine. We're locked down. Amazon is sold the fuck out of puzzles. I don't know if you guys are aware of this. Amazon is sold out of puzzles. You love Survivor. You want to do a puzzle right now? How cool is it? Stuck with your family against your will. <laughs> To, to be doing survivor puzzle challenges against them. I think oh, this yeah. is freaking awesome. Like, like the, the fact that, that, that survivor puzzle.com entered our lives right now is the perfect time. 10% off use promo code fair play. Uh, I'm, I'm jazzed. I can't wait. As I said, I got the tree coming. Me and Matt are going to be battling. I got the, I got the, I got the 40 ship coming. Oh, uh, the 40 ship dude is happening. But yeah, uh, Tommy go to uh, on Instagram. It's, perplexers puzzles and okay. you, you you can see all the different puzzles or go to survivorpuzzle.com and you can see all the puzzles I and, use, you. and use promo code fair play for 10 percent off but yeah so we, it's, it's challenge time it's for immunity it's for a fire token it's the first woman and first man to win it's basically holding on to a pole as long as possible, which these individual immunity challenges like this, yeah. the kind that is like, I love the, it. The most simple challenge ever. Now I want to ask you guys. So when I'm watching, it's this tall pole and it's got little footholds from the top to the bottom. Yeah. Par you, Parvati beat Ozzy on, on this challenge. 
Okay. Yeah, so, carbs challenge. Yeah. So yeah. my my question to you is like the leverage of the body. Like if I was to do this puzzle, or I'm, I'm sorry, if I was to do this challenge, I would probably not even put my toes at first in those footholds. I would probably wrap my legs around it and wrap my arms around it and like kind of lean back to where your wiener area is up against the, the pole and you're kind of lean back, right? Would you, how, what would your guy's strategy be on this specific challenge? Cause I was scared for people that like when Michelle fell, I thought, dude, you could break your ankles. Or- I, I, I was so scared. Like I thought that, potentially could have been game over and i'm just like that is that would have been the worst fucking way to go out but first challenge after the merge breaking your ankle dropping from that i was that's like, tall uh, yeah the top has a far drop how would you do this uh challenge tommy i texted uh michelle fitz and i was like yo are you good after that like how's it going she's like that was about two stories she's like that hurt for so long after that you know so <laughs> she's like yeah it was about two stories just drop yeah. um how would I do this? Uh, wait until about three or four fall and then just slip off the ball. But would you? <laughs> there, have you not watched uh, season 39? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think the key to that challenge is, is uh, being more muscle than, than, than not muscle. Being as light as possible also helps. I think I think your smaller people have have a distinct advantage. Which and Denise le- is obviously falls under that category. Yeah, she's M- tiny. Uh, and 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 purely muscle. Right, right. So, yeah. we, but I don't think it helps if you're uh, if you're crying that you're scared. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I do not think that it's helping because I, I think Adam legitimately had a chance in that challenge. I think his body yeah. is comparable to mine. I think I would do pretty good at that challenge. I don't know if I would win, but I think I would be right there, and uh, or even win. And yeah. uh, and, I, and I think Adam had that potential, but mentally to to be checked out. At, at, and I'm scared of heights, but that's one. It's just like. You can't think about heights once you're up there. Like that that's the the heights ain't gonna beat you. It's right. holding on to that fucking pole is gonna beat so so once you're up there, it's like fuck fuck the heights. I'm here. Right. Yeah. That challenge is like all mental because look at Jeremy, he's a brick shit house and he was just zoned <laughs> in. I'm gonna win. I don't care how long I have to do. He I could see him holding it forever. You know, I, he's not meant for that. Like I, when this started, I was like, Adam's gonna win this. He's small. Yep. And then I was like, then he mentally checked out. So I he think did. it's more mental than like what your, you know, your strategy is. But yeah, that, <laughs> so, so well, if, you're, well, if, if you're looking at the pecking order, it's uh, uh, <laughs> it, there. You go. Thank you. That's there that's you an easy easy bet each and every week. Get that money. Uh, Michelle with the hard fall. Then Adam, Sarah, Tyson, Wendell, Tony, Sophie, Kim drops. Denise wins the women's uh, side of immunity and a fire token. Next is Ben out. And then it's a showdown between Nick and Jeremy. And this is the second time that we have the showdown music. Thank you, Sia, for that. And uh, we have Jeremy with a death stare to Nick. Oh, yeah, he did. He, he did have a death stare to Nick. So, and, and I just want to say something. Uh, props to Jeremy for the win. However... My name is Johnny Fairplay, and I know what's fair and is not fair. That was not fair. Too much fire pole training. Oh, yeah, because he, uh, he is a fireman. Yeah. Now, so, yeah. And, and if you want to trim up your fire pole, there's only one place to go. Dude, I, <laughs> I swear to you, Johnny oh. Fairplay, manscaped.com. But don't put this on your face, Tommy Sheehan, because I want to oh. see. Well, actually, before we get into this. If you end up shaving your beard, can you do me one favor? And this is not a joke. This is very serious. Got? I would love for you to shave your beard hairs off, put them them, put them in a Ziploc bag, you mail them to me so I can hang it on my beard. I have like a couple friends of mine's beards in Ziplocs. It looks like a bag of pubes. It's fucking awesome. <laughs> but I would love, dude, I oh, don't yeah. give a fuck about your winner buff. <laughs> I would love to have Tommy Sheehan's shaved beard hairs hanging up in my Survivor Collector's room. So if you shave it, please send it to me. 
Because <laughs> I've got some weird requests, but that's got to be the weirdest. But I will, I will hey. always have as long as I can and mail you my uh, my my cubic beard. Dude, I'm gonna, that, I'm that's do the you, weirdest I'm request you, he's ever had. Uh, I'm Johnny. gonna do you one better, Tommy Sheehan. This <laughs> box is sealed right here from Manscaped. I'm opening up to show you what I'm sending you in the mail. I already have your address. There you go. You are getting the uh, the Manscaped uh, travel bag. Nice. The Manscaped Times. Yeah, newspaper balls to the walls. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Uh, you're getting the Crop Reviver. It's a ball toner. Never know when you're going to have to refresh your balls. Nice. You're getting the crop preserver. This is ball deodorant. Now, I know you put deodorant on the smelliest part of your body, which are your armpits, right? Well, You're wrong. The smelliest <laughs> part of your body is your balls. Ask your woman. You need this. I'm sending this. You're getting ball deodorant. She probably doesn't know. I got you some manscaped underwear, just like Johnny Fairplay. We can match. Wow. It'd be twinsies. Oh, uh, nice. Size XL. Perfect. That's good. That's perfect. Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. Well, I don't know. I'll, I'll ask the girlfriend <laughs> on that one. And of course, the lawnmower 3.0. This oh. thing, what, 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 what did we find out this thing has on, uh, on how long does this last, Matt? Oh, dude, the battery lasts f forever. What? I mean, I know. Man, what does this say? 90 well, minutes? I, I'm longer than that. I mean, let me, let me see here. So basically, it's, Manscaped is the only men's brand dedicated to below the waist grooming and hygiene. You're probably spending more time than ever with your significant other. And if you don't want to keep it clean down there, your partner will notice. So Manscaped is forever changing the grooming game with their perfect package 3.0 essentials kit. As Johnny has showed our listeners, the perfect tools for your family jewels and the perfect package 3.0 kit comes with a new and improved Lamoa 3.0, which you're going to shave your beard with eventually and send me your beard. <laughs> no, don't use it. Do not use it on your beard. It's only meant for No, but, but it doesn't matter, though. He's going to shave his beard first. Oh, then, shave your beard then, first and, and then, then and never put those in a bag up there again. Yes. Okay. Deal. All right. That's look at right. This. So for a limited time, subscribers get not one but two free gifts. The Shed Travel Bag, $39 value. The Patented High Performance Anti-Chafing Boxer Briefs. Get 20% off of free shipping with the code. What code is it, Johnny Fairplay? Survivor. They love it when we do that. At manscapes.com. <laughs> Do yourself a favor. Always use the right tools for the job. That's twenty percent off and free shipping with promo code Survivor at Manscaped.com. And uh, help your relationship out during this quarantine. Your partner, your body, and your balls will thank you. And Tommy, you're going to be uh, getting a free Manscaped uh, lawnmower 3.0 essentials kit. And seriously, though, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hang that. It'll say Survivor. You know. Freaking Tommy Sheehan winner, winner, and in, in quotation marks. But dude, no one on the that that's every time I watch Survivor and I watch these Ponderosa videos, the first thing everyone does is shave off their beard, and I'm yeah. like, God, dude, I I wish that I could tell <laughs> CBS to, that I, I, I I would give anything to have a wall of Ziploc bags of like Jeff Varner's beard and Wendell's beard and Tommy Sheehan's beard. I, yeah. I know it's fucking bizarre, but and I think it's fucking good. hilarious. These manscaped uh, boxer briefs, Tommy. You get, oh. you, get, you, get, you get your mug like this. This is a Wu Tang mug right here. <laughs> well, Johnny, do you have something? Do you have something? <laughs> hey, have... no, you know what to do. <laughs> so, so, Tommy, I got a question for you, Tommy. You're a longtime Survivor fan. So, yeah. I, I started doing this podcast with Johnny Fairplay. I don't know how long has it been now, Johnny. Two two years of the worst years of my life. I something something like that. that's how you describe it. I'm I'm I, I'm I'm lucky someone picks up the phone when I call, so we're good. <laughs> but I'm, I'm in, all, in all seriousness, like, were you a fan back in Pearl Islands with Rupert and Johnny Fairplay? And like, what is it like having a guy like Johnny Fairplay who's the fucking legendary villain busting your balls all the time. What is like your thoughts on just kind of <laughs> you being won, trolled you, by Johnny Fairplay? But, but you, you, you won Survivor and now you're, you know, you're able to do like other people's podcasts and meet all these people. Is it cool for you? Like, is it still like a, a rush and something fun for you? Oh, it's so much fun. I, hated Johnny Fairplay when I was like nine years old and I still hate it. I say hate him now, you know, so 
No, it's <laughs> unreal. It was, I went to this like survivor Christmas party in New York City. And, you know, my fiance was like, Tommy, relax. I was like, oh my God, uh, you know, Cerise here. Oh my God, you know, Richard Hatchie's. Oh my God, Dom. Oh my God. And everyone was just like, Tommy, you're part of us. And I was like, I still don't feel like I even played the game. I, I still like, well, I'm, I'm that, talking. That, that, that part's that true. Is, <laughs> yeah, there's no way for me to play, but it is so cool. Cause like, again, I was, I'm just a Survivor fan. I love Survivor. It's, it's, that's it's the just, beauty of that's the beauty of it for me that you won like when you won and I, and I watched the finale and how stoked you were that moment what was that moment like is it still surreal to you dude when oh. you know I mean going into the finale did you know that you had won I mean were you pretty confident that you were the winner of of this of the game Pretty cool story. So yeah, I, I knew I knew I won eight to two. Um, but I told everybody in my family that you know, like I made final three. I got you know, but I came second place. I lost eight to two to Dean. So I told my mom, my dad, you know, my sister, my fiance, everybody that I lost eight to two. Um, so they were like, "Why are we even going to come to LA if you lost?" Like, what was the point? I was like, "Just come. Like, it's a once in a lifetime experience." And Did you tell your fact, daddy he had to show off his haircut? Oh, you know, he loves it. You know, it, they, they want him on the show now. But my I mom's bet. applied. You know, every my family loves Survivor just as much as me. So they were excited to be there. But That's the awesome. Best, the best feeling in the world was when I got that third vote. I turn, if you, you can see it on the TV, I turn and smile to my family. And then all of them just lost it because they oh. knew, they thought I lost it to two. So once I got that third vote, they knew I lied to them. And all three at the one time, all like six of them sitting there just dry, dying, crying. And that's why you saw my dad run up on the stage. They told him not to do that. And he just couldn't help but just. I love run. it. Oh, I, how, I, how could you not, dude? Like your son yeah. just won Survivor. Yeah. It's fu- I, that's one of the fucking coolest things that could ever happen to you in your fucking life. I, I um, saw your I saw your dad and I was just like, God, I wish they had casted him instead of Tommy. <laughs> my dad would be the greatest character on survivor ever yeah he was he, he showed up in a pink suit a pink suit he's got his yeah. mullet and then he's trying to take jeff's job like you know in between commercials like jeff comes out and talks to the fans well he stands up and just starts talking to everybody I and they're it. like sure, you gotta sit down he's like hell no like my son's playing he's like he's telling everyone to be on tommy in the stands i'm like dad man you're gonna so, kick so it did out. you did you have like a lot of viewing parties and stuff did you like live it up during your season yeah it was it was a lot of fun my first one was just like all families and friends we had probably like 100 people at like a local you know watering hole but then after that dean and i did them all together so uh, dean and i were friends throughout the season they didn't show how close we were actually like we, we were pretty good alliance to merge, but um, I, I watched all of them. Dean's family, my family, they're really close. Um, so it was fun to like get both of our families together and watch it. So would you play okay. blood? Some, one of our uh, listeners, Sam Higdon says, Tommy and his dad for Blood versus Water 2. If you guys got a call for Blood versus Water, well, it's Blood versus Water 3, actually, but would, would you guys play it? Um, all my they argue all the time. They're like, who would be better? My mom, my dad, my fiance, who's gonna get asked? Your, back? your dad, <laughs> oh, he would, he would 100%. And then he would, he would send uh, you home. I think that would be great. <laughs> oh, he would. I would love to play with any of them just to. And I think if I played again, I would play for them. You know what I mean? I feel like it's hard to win two nights in a row. I feel like you could then kind of like what uh Amber's doing is like help yeah. them out a little bit and, and what Rupert them. did for his wife, yeah, exactly. Right. You know, I got my experience. Yeah, and and uh, Tommy, I, I know you don't talk about. It. Uh, can you, Matt? Can you post uh, uh, Tyler Warber's uh, post? So Tommy also has a, a podcast. He does, uh, it's sponsored by Casper and My Pillow. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Be sure to check that out. It's a uh, promo code. Friendly <laughs> <laughs> ghost, right? I won't give them nightmares. Casper won't give them nightmares. Tyler, you know, all right. I'm, so, I'm more of a pa- purple mattress guy. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So, so we see a scene of Jeremy, Ben, and Tony, and I'm loving Tony this season. You guys, I, I I'm a big Tony fan, and I yeah. think Tony is playing a great game because, I, you know, it's kind of like that coach 
edit where you the first time is great, second time is ah, third time is kind of the charm. And I think Tony, he's such a big threat and such a likable guy, but he hasn't been on the radar of going home right now. And we see Jeremy Ben and Tony talking. Uh, everyone is saying, you know, possibly Nick going home. And then um, Nick keeps butting in on every conversation that's happening as we see in the edit. You yeah, know, Nick, like, Nick is a, was, is, what was it called on Seinfeld? A close stepper? I don't know. I mean, obviously. Remember, remember on, on Seinfeld, that guy used to, uh, uh, he, uh, no. Uh, I never watched Seinfeld. I have no idea what you're talking about. Side, side idler. But anyways, it, Nick's buddy guy that kept doing that to Elaine, and she eventually gave him uh, Tic Tacs. <laughs> so, so you you could hear him uh, coming down the hall. Oh, hey, uh, oh, yeah. He's a sidler. Yeah. Hey. Who knew Nick is a sidler? Yeah. So he's, <laughs> I mean, you know, Nick is a newer winner. He's a fan of survivors. So, I, you know, him showing up, um, walking up to different conversations, it doesn't surprise me. Yeah. If I'm hey. out there, I'm going to be walking up on different conversations as well to see what hey. the hell's going on. And, and and I want to say this, like uh, Tony does refer to Nick as a low profile player. Nick might be a low profile player, but I respect his, his game more than a high percentage of the winners. So I, I, I think Nick that, you know, there, there's certain winners that win with luck, you know, certain circumstances get them there. And then there's other players that, you know, in spite of whatever uh, the survivor gods foresee to happen, they win in spite of that. They, they own their destiny at the end of the game. And uh, Nick Wilson's one of those guys. Mm -hmm. now, do, do you hear me? Have you met Wait. Nick before, Tommy? No, but I'm really like Elaine's my best friend from my season, one of my best friends, and she's close with Nick. So like we talk through people, you know, stuff like that. He hit me up when he was in New York, but then I wasn't in New York. I was in Pennsylvania. But yeah, I've, I've like we know each other through Elaine pretty much. Yeah. yeah I mean, what would you what would you say about Nick's game? Would you consider him? I mean, like, would you agree he's low profile, but would you also have him on your high respect uh, column? Look, yeah, exactly. He's a, he's definitely a low-profile winner. He was just on a great season, like you, you said, that helps, you know, that status. But I think what's hurting him right now is I don't think Nick really knows what it's like to be really on the bottom where, like, your name is on the chopping block. Um, so I think then he's like, wait, not in his season. Everyone kept coming to him and talking to him where now no one's talking to him. He's like, well, what do I do? I should pop in on conversations. So – I think it's just an adjustment, and like if he finds footing, he'll be fine. You know, yeah. he's a good player. Well, he he was he was lonely on the totem pole at the beginning of of uh, David versus Goliath. If if Pat isn't meta backed oh. out, he's the first True. boot. Yeah, he wasn't doing shit, but it, <laughs> yeah, it, it, he, he still never changed that in his game. <laughs> <laughs> but but it's interesting because seeing him walk up on conversations make him makes him look like a little like puppy dog kind of thing, like but, but, he, like a starstruck kind different. of guy. Like, like they were catching him doing it, and but I, you know, I feel he was kind of nonchalant about it. Whereas I think Adam does the same thing, but Adam does the. So what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> and so you know, by compare and con contrast, I, 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 you know, I, I think Nick was immensely smoother. And you, and you did have uh, who was it that mentioned? Um, uh, Nick mentions. That uh, anyone that has played with Adam has told him, don't trust Adam. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, it, it comes down to, you know, Nick wants Adam out. Um, and then, you know, Nick is a possible person on the chopping, chopping block, but then also Wendell. It's like those are the three people. Tyson, who's won his way back in the game, who is someone who could win the game, is not even on anybody's radar. And and I wonder like if, if that would have been Boston Rob or Poverty. I think if it's Boston but, Rob, especially, but Poverty probably so as well. Next boot. So, but yeah, did you know, you find but, that but he won an idol. Tyson was not even uh, is it, not even a factor. And I, go ahead, Tommy. I thought Tyson played it unbelievable. Right. Not only did he win himself back in the game, he now has seven friends on the jury. 
but sometimes not speaking is the best gameplay. He just sat there, let yeah. the rest of them just kind of demolish each other, and he's like, just use me as a number. I'm just happy to be here. And then once he can gain footing, gain a, a you know someone slowly here, slowly there, then you make your move. So I think he played that phenomenally. I kind of look at it like in my season when there was 11 people left and they split in six and five, right? And there was right. – Four Lyro girls and me, the Volkai guy. Volkai guy right. Um, and <laughs> and uh, once I saw Missy attacking Karishma, I was like, wait, let them just – I'm going to sit back. Let them attack each other. And that's kind of what Tyson's doing, which I thought was fantastic gameplay yeah. so far. Tyson came out of the shoot where he wanted to kind of dictate the pace. And so, like, he went to – uh, you know, whoever that would listen, he's just like, you know, Sandra's the easy, easy vote. I mean, she won twice. Like, you know, and, and they're like, no, nah, you know, because if yeah. Sandra's here, she's a shield. I want her here. So then he was like, okay, well, then Tony is the obvious choice. And he's, he's pitching Tony to everyone. And they're like, no, nah, Tommy or Tony doesn't seem like he's doing anything. Like, you know, let's, and so then he was just like, let's go. After it. So at that point, everyone had taught, they're just like, how about this guy that keeps throwing out people's names? Yeah. <laughs> like, like no one was going after anyone. You know, Tyson took it upon himself to kind of get the ball rolling, like you know, and and it and that's what worked against him. So I, I think he learned from his mistakes. It's all I think you know, the key to survivor is the evolution of your game. And you know, I I understand Tyson coming in, you know, heavy-handed, kind of you know, trying to trying to set the pace that didn't work. He learned from his mistakes, and this time he's like, okay. <laughs> and I don't know about you guys, but Jeremy really impressed me. You know, we see Jeremy kind of talking to everyone, and Jeremy comes across in this way that, like, he can kind of get his point across and, and put his two cents in and and say who he thinks should go without seeming like a huge threat. Like I, a, think, I think Jeremy wrote down Wendell's name. I yeah. know that's what I'm saying, dude. Like, like, what, how many, how many, how many, how many votes did did Adam have? He only had three, right? Yeah, three, he only had three. But Nick I'm Nick. saying, I I think Jeremy is Nick playing, Michelle, Nick Michelle, and Wendell. Yeah, right. I think Jeremy is playing a killer game. I I really and do. I love Jeremy's line where he says, "I'm driving the car, but everyone else is going to think I'm the passenger." So, like, he's yeah. saying, like, I'm going to make the decisions. No one's going to think I'm a big threat until the end, and then you can speak to your game. So. Jeremy, I he he's a big, strong, lovable. Like I don't know yeah. how he lowers. He just won an immunity. And no one's talking about it next week if he doesn't. Like he just somehow like has this like cult following, and he's un he he impresses me day after day. But who I really was impressed with this episode was Sophie Clark, who oh, yeah. instantly caught it. Boom! Right from the start, she goes, "Wait, why does everyone want Nick out? Why don't we want Wendell out? Is that because Jeremy?" So she kind of just saw. She's like, "Look, this boy click starting. She, they want." She orchestrated that. So, yeah, like, oh. I, I, I could see Jeremy going back and taking credit for it, but, but yeah, I think it was an obvious Sophie orchestration. Yeah, Sophie yeah. is one of the smartest players in the game. Someone who's well, well kinda... Sophie. Sophie was a twelve-year-old in high school, as we learned at tribal council. Right. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she said. My daughter goes, she was 12 in high school? No wonder no one liked her. <laughs> He's my favorite this season. I don't really remember her season that well, you know, because it was a while back. But I'm like, damn, she's impressing me every episode. Well, and she, she is. Wow. Her, her and Yule were two players I was like, eh. Like, am I really? Uh, they're not going to be kind of a. Uh, they're I mean, not not even on the radar for me. But man, yeah, I thought both. you. I thought Yule and Sophie are two of the smartest players in this entire season, dude. As far as strategic players, yeah. and it being yeah. good television. I mean, like like they've kind of owned their scenes that they've had. Yeah. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. I mean, don't 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 overdo it. Let's not let's not. Yeah, get yeah, crazy. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah we, we, we don't want, we don't want to be making any Sophie uh, t shirts at Johnny Fairplay. I do. I have, I have a solid white shirt. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it. But uh, you know, Adam is kind of you know Adam is kind of tripping out before tribal. He doesn't know what's going on. Um, you know, he's getting a weird vibe. Adam is a you know a ton of confessionals this season. I'm not like one of those guys that does a. Microsoft Excel sheet of who has the yeah. most confessionals, but I have to believe that Adam Klein has some of the top 
confessionals. So a listener, you survivor geeks out there that really pay attention to stats. I'm curious how many freaking confessionals does he have uh, compared to most people, but it's night 21 tribal council. Like I said, Tyson's back in the game. He's not even on the radar of anybody, which is crazy to me. They even say it. They just flat out say it in tribal. They're just like, yeah. you know, what, what Tyson said, he's no longer loosey-goosey with his filter. And then everyone else says, yeah, he's not, he's, he's not getting a vote. <laughs> oh, no, no. And, and Adam's paranoid as hell. Tony Vlachos is playing this game that I'm loving. I, I, I just, I have a note that just, I, I love Tony Vlachos. I, I really love do. Tony Vlachos too. And we have, when we had the Tony's ladder and the, uh, <laughs> the cops are us shirt available at johnnyfairplay.com. And with every phone call, of course you get a phone call from me, Johnny Fairplay, thanking you for your purchase. Unless you're all these new fucking out of the country motherfuckers. So I'll, I'll, I'll Skype you, but, uh, Jesus. <laughs> but, but, yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, Wendell is gone. Wendell goes to the edge of extinction, but Wendell still has, you know, uh, an attitude of, you know what? Uh, I'm, I'm ready to kind of get back in this game. You know, the, it's, the, it's, the marathon continues or his yeah. words as he gives, uh, both Michelle and Nick tokens. So, yep. and, and, uh, I talked to Wendell, soon after returning from from filming and uh you know I, once again i i don't know spoilers i hate spoilers don't tell me spoilers and i preface every conversation with you know someone that that comes back or someone that that's in the survivor community that talks to other survivors that knows i'm just like i'm like i don't want it, it doesn't help the podcast i mean right. like you know right, as right, i right. said my, my winner pick of tommy seasons chelsea so i'm right. i'm obviously an idiot I vote with my blue chew. <laughs> <laughs> so, but when Wendell did come back, uh, he 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 was very positive, and uh, and and he's and he said in no way was it a spoiler. However, it 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 potentially is based on tonight. He uh, his exact words were, "It sucks to meet your heroes." Wendell said that. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and I, I think tonight I learned what the definition that was. And, uh, I think Jeremy Collins was his hero. Wow. That sucks, man. Th there you have it guys. Cool. Wendell, Wendell goes home. Uh, I, think, I think there's more that we didn't see because you saw, you saw Jeremy championing to, to, to turn the vote to Adam versus Wendell, you know, since it was a cho choice between and Nick and Wendell, and it, and it looked like it was it was leaning towards Wendell, and so he went back. He he did get behind the wheel of that car versus being a passenger, you know, trying to save Wendell, and uh, and I think there's there's a good 20, 30 minutes of conversation that we did not see that Jeremy that Jeremy uh, jumped on board the I'm I'm cool with the Wendell vote train. Well, mm -hmm. I, I, let me ask you guys this, so. Jeff says something at tribal about, um, you know, Tyson's back in the game. And I think Tony or somebody says, you know, Hey, it's a new game now. Like at the time Tyson was the guy to, to, to get out of the game, but now Tyson is back in the game and, and that dynamic is different. Yeah. And Tony, Tony, Tony was at the, but like if they had, if there had not have been a merge, Tony's probably the next person voted out. And now all that's changed. So do you think there's any way that someone like Tyson could make it to the final three and potentially win the game? Sure. I do. What do you think, Tommy? Zero percent chance. Everyone knows right now they've seen season 38, right? And they know, you know, Chris Underwood played a great, you know, last nine days or whatever, but you spend all this time. Tyson just spent all this time just kicking it, just having fun with them. So he knows now, those people are rooting for Tyson. He's one of them. So that's seven votes that they can't get on their side. So they're never going to want someone from the edge sitting at the end anymore. So, no, so, I, so, I, 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 never mind. I like his thinking. He, Tommy, you convinced me. We're we're in an alliance. I'm, I want to be on the right side of this. So, so, <laughs> so Tyson or whoever ends up coming back at day 36 or go. whatever, or not, yeah. there, no one – from Edge is winning this season, and if no, you were to, if you were to pick right now a winner, who would it be? I know that I hate these questions, but I'm asking it anyways. I'm gonna go. Um, 
you know, it's probably a lot of winner picks right now. I oh, think yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. Because Sophie, she's making a lot of moves, right? They're subtle moves. There's they're not big splashy moves, but she already has a couple resume. Like today's move, that was on her resume. She can talk to it, right? Mm-hmm. But no one's recognizing that. So it's she's keeping her threat level low, but she's making these big moves. But her name is not too low where people like um, didn't Wendell say like, oh, Sophie's playing hard. Yeah. Like, so her name's like she's getting respect. She like she's a low profile player, so her name's getting respect now. But it's not like oh, we can't sit next to her. But then when they do sit next to her, she's gonna be like, well, look what I did. Right. There you go. I mean, I, me I, personally, I, Johnny. I don't hate. I don't hate. I don't hate that pick. I don't either. I don't either. But I, quite frankly, I think that uh, I think Jeremy Collins could win this season. I, I, I really do. Uh, I, I, I love I love him. I loved him first time I saw him play, and uh, he's just one of those guys. He's just a likable, cool dude, and he's another one of those guys that's like not like a Tyson or this like lifer survivor player. Like he he played survivor multiple times, but he goes back to his normal life. Like you, Tommy, mm-hmm. it's like you have a life outside of survivor. You're not like Johnny Fairplay who has to have survivor or you'll fucking dissolve into, into the, uh, into the ocean. I'm just kidding. But you know what I'm saying? Like Jeremy is not, he's not like the biggest, like, you know, personality that everyone thinks of like a Tony Vlachos or, or, you know, even Adam Klein is getting all this air time. I, I think Jeremy Collins has a good shot of winning. I could be totally wrong. Just like Johnny Fairplay is wrong every time, but yeah, Jeremy Collins got, and Sophie I, is 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 two good choices in my opinion right now. I think I got I think I got the right pick finally. Who? Chris Underwood. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tommy Sheehan, if if people want to follow you on social media and where, send where your picks of your super hard dicks, uh, courtesy yeah, yeah. of Bluetooth.com. Uh, and I, I'm going to put like when Tommy, if he does <laughs> private message me, I'll give you my address. I I yeah. will send I'll send a photo of Tommy's beard hanging on my wall one day. Now I, I'm not encouraging you to shave. Yeah. You can grow no, it. The like end of the long. quarantine. Yeah, once the quarantine's done, I'm gonna get a fresh shave and then just yeah. see how long I can get. What day quarantine are this? We, it's like probably day twenty something. So well, well they, they they Virginia they they called it at a uh, June tenth. Is what the end of the, the quarantine? Yeah, for Virginia. That's that's. Ours- that's crazy. New York is the most cases. We're April thirtieth. Yeah. Uh, well, the we have a we have a we have a Democrat governor, and the Republican primary is June 9th. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> just just saying. <laughs> well, well, Tommy, dude, you know it is uh, is an honor to have you on our show for real, and it sucks that you didn't get a chance to go out there. Um, but I'm I glad, get it. I'm glad he did. I would rather have him out there with me in Australia versus uh, uh, U.S. versus Australia. Sa- save, we're, save your we're good saying, shit, Tommy. I'm, I'm in. I'm in Australia. We're, we're going to come there. We'll, you know, we'll get our accents going and we'll, we'll, we'll demolish those Australians and we'll show them what real survivors like. I love it. I love it. And and uh, everybody out there, uh, if you guys and if you guys haven't yet, and oh my God, a, a ton of you have. Thank you so much. We have the most patrons we've ever had in the history of Survivor NSFW because you guys are paying attention to the content that we're delivering. We're doing. Uh, we'll be dropping our second Q and A in which you know once you become a patron, you get added to the secret Facebook group. You guys are asking the questions. You guys are steering the ship. Uh, lots of non-survivor related questions. I assure you lots of stories that could get me in a ton of trouble. Lots of stories that I don't want out there, but we're answering them anyway. Uh, we have top 10 lists. We, we did last week. We did top 10 worst winners, uh, in the history of survivor top five, Tommy <laughs> Sheehan right there. Uh, we're doing a top 10 best winners coming up with, uh, Russell Hans is going to be back to join us on that. Uh, out of nowhere, I am recording this weekend with the war dog. Happy birthday, war dog. He's just, just celebrated birthday. And, uh, the war dog and I are doing the top 10 greatest villains in the history of professional wrestling. We are starting with 1980, going to modern day. I'm so excited about this. I have my list. I do. I do. As of this time, have two honorable mentions because I do cheat, and that's what a bad guy does. And uh, so I'm recording this weekend with War Dog, uh, top ten greatest heels in the history of professional wrestling. We also uh, I, I recorded with uh, 
with Luke Toki, uh, uh, Survivor Australia legend, talking a, a look back at the entire season of Survivor Australia All Stars. Incredible top five season of all time for me. We have Flick coming up. Uh, we have some other Australian All Stars joining us in the near future. The best way to support the Survivor NSFW podcast is to go Patreon at least for one month. And we're gonna we're gonna kill you with content during this quarantine. We promise. That's patreon.com slash survivor nsfw. And uh, get a t-shirt, johnnyfairplay.com. You get a phone call for Johnny Fairplay thanking you. Uh go to uh, manscaped.com, trim that shit up real nice, like she likes it, and mm. uh take a blue chew, both of which use promo code survivor. Survivorpuzzle.com, use promo code FAIRPLAY, get 10% off so you're not bored as shit sitting at home. And last but not least, go to FANDUEL.com slash FAIRPLAY. FAIRPLAY is case sensitive, all caps, FANDUEL.com slash FAIRPLAY. Get in your picks, win some free money, nothing to enter, get in today. Cheers, everybody. Uh, We will see, oh, real quick, the last comment of the night, Russell Hand says... The Russell ah. Hand Show, Tommy, my fave. There you have it. <laughs> there you have it. From, from, from Russ, legendary Russell Hands. Cheers, everybody. Thank you. We'll see you next time on Survivor NSFW. Oh, 